Hi and welcome to Terribly Fun Film. In 2007, Sci-Fi Channel launched the show Painkiller Jane, starring Christina Loken. It only lasted one season. But before that, they did the movie Painkiller Jane, which was intended to be a uh, made tv backdoor pilot. But this movie, again, sci-fi channel movie, and that show, again, a sci-fi channel show, have nothing to do with each other outside of both being based on the same comic book property. The show ignores most of the cast and the plot and all that jazz of the movie. And the movie never had a sequel or any other shows or anything, so once it's over, it's over. I have not read the comic books that uh, this is based on. I know they exist. I've seen them tangentially. tangentially. I have come across them uh, in the comic books. I've just never picked them up. I don't know if they're any good. It's still going on, so I guess it's at least fairly popular. With all that out of the way, how is the 2005 made for Sci-Fi Channel movie Painkiller Jane? We start off in Chechnya, where a special forces unit is attempting to stop a terrorist cell to gather some info on. However, they get there too late and a biochemical weapon has been unleashed, killing everybody in the unit except for Jane. Five days later, Jane wakes up and even though she was shot multiple times by the soldiers at the uh, place where the biochemical weapon was released, she s shows very few scars. The uh, biochemical weapon did not kill her, even though it killed everybody else. So now, the military and the U.S. government want to know why this happened. So they bring in a specialist, Dr. Graham Knight, in order to help evaluate and run blood tests and see how this happened and what's going on. During all that, she is trying to figure out the mystery of who set them up, how this happened, and trying to adjust to her new powers, of which include an amazing healing factor, think uh, Wolverine and X-Men, the ability to see information, and I don't just mean like I can read text off of the screen. No, she can scan it for a second. All the important information basically gets sucked into her head at a moment's notice type deal. So when she's running, she can easily evade things. Kind of like Spider-Man's spider sense is the best way I can describe it. All the while, they're trying to deal with an assassin that they find out is trying to come kill her because clearly the people who started this don't want some sort of natural vaccine to their biochemical weapon to be created. And that's all I'll say for the plot. I uh, don't want to give too much away. Twist, turns. The movie was written by John Harrison and Don Keith Oper from a story they created along with Greg Gold. Again, based on the Joe Cazeta and Jimmy Palmotti. And the actual plot is alright. If I just run down the entire plot, you'd probably figure out some of the twists and turns. You'd probably figure out who's actually a good guy, who's actually a bad guy, who was set up, how it happened, why it happened, money, obviously. Things like that fairly easily. The movie holds few surprises. But, that does not mean it is in any way, shape, or form. That, you've heard me mention Byron's reviews video about cliches being good or bad before. I'm going to mention it again here. Just because something is predictable, or is cliche, does not necessarily make it bad so long as it utilizes 
these things in a clever way that works for the story at hand. And I think that's what happens here as the characterizations for everyone, twists included, are very strong. Jane is a really interesting and pathetic character and 100% badass. Direct CO is Colonel Watts, and he's also a really interesting figure, very empathetic. Um, he does have his loyalties in the military, but he does legitimately feel for Jane and wants to help her in any way he can without actually going against military orders, and I think that's a really interesting characterization going on there. Dr. Graham Knight is a real cool guy, very calm, very collected. And it makes him cunning and intriguing in equal parts, and you can probably figure out the rest from there. There is the character of Nick, which is a civilian that gets wrapped up in the storyline when he sort of accidentally saves Jane. And he's a sort of Robin Hood character, uh, a thief robbing from the rich, giving to those less fortunate type deal. He's an interesting character, but he's not really focused on that much as such his characterization. He feels less well-rounded than the people I just named. Um, decent. But they do leave a lot open because they were hoping for a TV show spinoff that they don't really end certain things with him, so he doesn't feel fleshed out at all. And while the dialogue might be a mishmash of military commands and barking orders alongside pseudo-medical terrorism biochemical weapon jargon, it does sound believable. The actors execute it well enough, and I never really thought we had a big exposition dump. It was exposition of the dialogue, but it never feels like the movie just slows down to give us all the information. It's all very well integrated within the plot and the characters and whichever scene happens to be going on. The movie was directed by Sanford Bookstaver, and that is quite a name. Sanford Bookstaver. The movie is super well directed crazy amount of stuff. Oozing style, all over the place kind of style. It's insane. I'll call the Spidey Sense sequences are really well done with everything going sort of black and white and then just the important things being highlighted and then she'll dodge them or, you know, do whatever she needs to when she's getting information off of a TV or a computer all the text becomes blurry, all the images become blurry, and then just certain things start popping out at her. And it just looks so good, and so stylized, and so interesting that, from a visual standpoint, despite being set on Earth, despite not having any mutants, or aliens, or anything like that, this is one of the most visually rich, and engaging sci-fi channel films I've ever seen. Right up there with Crimson Force and Mammoth. And that says so much about the style of the directing because here are our locations in the film. A Chechen um, terrorist base cell. A military hospital. A military base and a semi-abandoned warehouse that Nick operates out of. That's basically it. Between those places, excluding driving sequences, the, those are where 90% of the film takes place. But because it's so stylized and so interesting to look at, that I doubt you'll ever be bored by looking at the sets or anything like that because there's so much going on in terms of the cinematography and the editing and the lighting and all that and then the, that all comes down to the director's vision and he has a very clear vision of how to do that. Stephen McDutt's cinematography is 
glorious. Of course it is. You just heard me go on and on about how awesome the visuals are. It's it's great. It looks really strong. It's a strong, vibrant, uh, heavy depth of field uh, focus to it, excluding the um, Spidey sense scenes, which changes things up, but in a very cool, unique way that still works with the style of the movie. Andrew Seckler's editing is equally as good. The film doesn't really slow down. It just keeps moving and moving. It finds a nice rhythm very early on. It sucks you into it. And all the action scenes are easy to follow and excitingly well done. And it's just joyous. The CGI and special effects by Amanda Poller, um, Adam DeBosch Kemper, Robin Hackle, James Halverson, Greg Hansen, Ryan Jensen, Patrick Kalin, Brett Keyes, Christopher Mossman, Joseph Nego, Scott Paquin, Audrey Price, Derek Stevenson, Lisa Turner, and Karen Watson are very good. There is some CGI that looks a bit dated. But, way more often than not, due to just the style of the movie, the spider sense stuff, um, and the rich, engaging world that has been created for the film, most of the special effects still look very good. And I think a lot of that has to do with how well integrated they are into their scenes and into the movie. There are some bad fire effects near the end involving an explosion and some of the green screen is <laughs> but you know what this was a 2005 made for sci-fi channel film I'm really gonna let I'm gonna let that slide I'm gonna let that pass because I've seen way worse looking sci-fi channel movies come out much later so Brian Taylor's score is a bit of a disappointment. The actual theme that starts up during the opening title sequence and the actual theme which happens when Jane kind of first discovers her powers and at the very end of the movie just before the ending credits is pretty solid. Had this been a TV show it would be the theme that opens up the show every week while the opening title sequence played. It's catchy, and it's good, and it's the only score in the film you're going to remember. I don't even remember there being any pop or rock songs in this movie. I guess the score existed outside of that, but I really couldn't tell you. Playing Jane is Emmanuel Vagier, and she's probably best known for her roles on Lost Girl and CSI New York. And she's pretty good here. Um, some of the line reading early in the film when she's stoic badass soldier mode sound more bland and lifeless but once the powers come in once the mystery starts happening she wants to unravel what's going on how this happened to her and she's adjusting to the powers and her new life and all that jazz and she's more in civilian mode superhero mode if you will uh, she's way better. She handles the action scenes amazingly. Her uh, chemistry with co-stars Eric Dane, Kate Donovan, and Richard Roundtree are excellent. Eric Dane plays the Robin Hood-ish Nick. And he's good. He's a decent leading man for the small screen. He services the role just fine. He is okay in the action scenes. He's okay with the dialogue. But you could replace him with any other age appropriate, similar build type of actor trying to make it big. And I doubt the performances would be that different. Playing Colonel Watts is the man himself, Shaft. Richard Roundtree is in this film and he brings a lot of gravitas and weight and definitely helps sell the 
mistakes of the movie more so than anybody else I've tried to maybe hate Donovan uh, and he's just badass and fun I love watching him in his somewhat small very pivotal role as the colonel who tries helping her but doesn't want to you know disobey military commands all that jazz. he's great Tate Donovan, you heard me mention earlier, plays the Dr. Graham Knight, and he's excellent, perhaps the best overall performance in the film. He's so much fun. He's relishing every second of screen time, he's relishing every ridiculous word he gets to say, every crazy plot twist. He's having fun, and he can tell, and it's just cool to watch. It's enjoyable to see somebody just get the let loose and have a good old time and allow you, the audience, to have a good old time in return. I don't know why this version of Painkiller Jane didn't continue on to be the eventual TV show that happened two years later. I don't know its ratings, I don't know how it was received, but I can tell you it's watching it now, 12 years on from when it was made. It's a blast. The action is exciting and good. The dialogue works. The plot works. The special effects shockingly hold up fairly well. Flawed in the acting department, though it may be for two of the leads. They're not terrible. They're just not as great as they could have been. The rest of the cast is fantastic. Thank Killer Jane is Frickin' awesome. Biggest problem is tracking this sucker down. I will never understand why Sci-Fi Channel doesn't put a caveat into their uh, production contracts when they enter into a movie or TV show production with whatever house is doing it, UFO, whomever else, that these movies must be released on DVD in North America. I know Sci-Fi Channel knows they have a kind of a cult of people who watch their schlocky, fun, ridiculous stuff, myself included. That's this channel. I've never had a harder time tracking down a copy of this movie than I did for this. I even found Alien Express much easier than Finding Painkiller Jane. The 2005 movie, the TV show, is readily and easily found for a decent price if you are so inclined. I have not seen the show. I have no opinion of it. It's just sheer amounts of fun. It's exactly what I want. Awesome action, awesome special effects, engaging enough plot with decent actors trying their best. For a sci-fi channel movie, what more do you need? As always, thank you for watching. I've been your host, Bobby, and I'll see you next time.